Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a really simple, easy household chore checklist in Word. So the first thing you need to do is to decide how you want to list your chores. So you can do that personally by coming up with all your separate chores or you can use the help of ChatGPT. It's completely up to you. I've used ChatGPT and I'll show you how. So all I did was type in household chore checklist along the bottom here and then it came up with this list here. So if I just scroll down, you can see we've got this list. Now obviously you can change this list if, if you want to. You can do it in Word when you've transferred it across or you can come up with your own ideas based on this list. I'm happy with this list so I've counted up all of the rows that I would need in my table and I need 41 rows. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm not going to use the bottom ones, the tips. I'm just going to use the ones above. So what I'm going to do is click and drag my cursor across all of those elements. Then I'm simply going to select Command or Control C to copy it. I'm going to go back into Word. I'm just going to press the return key once on my keyboard to give me a space above my table. Go to Insert, Table, click on the drop down and select Insert Table. Here I'm simply going to press 2 for the amount of columns. I just want a column with the list or the chore in it and I just want 41 rows and click OK. So here's my table. All I've got to do now is just simply click and drag my mouse all the way down this left hand column. Then go to Home, go to Paste but before you click Paste click the drop down and I'm going to select Match Formatting. And as you can see Word has pasted everything across for me. Now, without doing anything else, without deselecting anything, if you do, just reselect this column on the left, hover your cursor over this middle line, click and drag that middle line all the way across to the other side, and that's the column we can use to just tick it if we want to. So you can literally end here if you want to, but I'm going to show you how to customise this so you can make it look as the thumbnail showed you at the beginning. So the first thing I'm going to do is to, you can just see that my daily chores are not in bold, but they have been defined by not being in bold, so I can tell that those are the headings. So the first thing I'm going to do is select this row here, go to Table Design, and on the shading, you can pick whatever shading you like. I'm going to pick this colour here, and I'm just going to go along and select those rows and click the shading just to define those headings and then you can't see the text very well so I'm going to select this text here go to the home tab go to the font color icon and I'm going to select white if you can't see white just click on the drop down and select white from here and I'm going to select bold once I'm happy with my text I'm and it's selected I'm going to go across to this paint tool here which is to copy the formatting that we've just done, so the white and the bold. I'm going to click the Painter tool. I'm just going to click and drag across this text, and you can see it will match that formatting. But now I don't have the Painter tool anymore, but this text is selected. I'll go back up to the Paint tool, click, click and drag across the next one, back up to the Painter tool, click and drag across. The reason this is working is because I've selected the text above to copy it. Make sure it's selected and then you can do the last one. Now for many people this will be fine. I need to put in a heading but I'm also just going to space out these rows a bit. They're quite tight together. So I'm going to select the whole table, go up to the top left where you've got this square with a cross in the middle. It will select the whole table, go up to layout and then you've got this height icon here which specifies the height of your row. So you can play around with the numbers but generally in this one if we go to 0.8 and press enter that's quite a nice distance between each row but you can also see my text is at the top of my row and I want it in the middle of my row. So again I've left my table selected I'm on the layout tab go to this icon here these are your alignment tools I'm going to select this one here which is aligned to left and center. 
If you want to align it to the top, the middle, or the or the right hand side, that's up to you. You can align it over here if you want to, if that makes life a bit easier, or you can align it over to the left. It's completely up to you. Once I've done that, I'm just going to put my cursor above the top of my table, and I'm just going to press the return key a few times simply because I want to put a title at the top. You can just simply type a title if you want to, but I just don't think that gives me enough flexibility. So to make it look a bit nicer, I'm going to go to Insert, Text Box, click on the drop down and select Draw Text Box. Just click and drag out a text box and then type in the title. Then I'm going to customize this text, select it, go to the Home tab. I'm going to select bold, I'm going to change my font to heli vector, and I'm going to increase my font size, and then I'm going to go across to center text, and I'm just going to stretch out this text box a little bit. Now if I deselect this text box, you can see we've got this black border. If I move it, you can also see it's got a white background. I'm going to get rid of both of those because I'm going to put a colored background on this, so select the text box, go to shape format, go to this icon which is outline and select no outline, go to shape fill and select no fill. Then when I deselect it you can see there's no outline and there's no background. So now I'm going to go to insert, shape, click on the drop down and I'm going to go for this rectangle here with the rounded edges or the corners. Click and then click and drag out a rectangle. You can see we've got this little yellow square here. If you click and pull that, you can see you can get a different curve to the corners of your rectangle. I'm gonna pull it fully over to the right. I'm then going to keep this selected, go to Shape Format, go to the Outline tool and just take off the outline. You can't see it very well, but it is there. Now you can see I've covered up all of the text. So we need to now move this behind the text. So make sure it's selected, go to Shape Format, and go to Send Backwards, click on the drop down, and select Center Back. Now our text is visible. I'm just going to reduce the size of that rectangle a little bit. Select the text, go to the Home tab, and select White. And now I'm just going to move this to the center. So in order to center this text with this box, if I select the text, then hold my command or control key down and select the box, go to shape format, go to align, and go down to align to center. They're now perfectly centered. And if I deselect, I just want to move that text down a little bit. So I'm going to select it, Use my arrow key just to move that down. Deselect, check I'm happy. Once I'm happy, I can group it together. Select the text, hold down the command or control key, select the box, go over to group, click on the drop down and select group. Now go to align. And if I say align to center, it will center this whole group to the center of my page. Deselect, check you're happy. I'd like to move everything down just a little bit. You can see at the bottom here, these seasonal chores have been cut in half. And if I want to move that title onto the next page, I can push the table down, but if you make any other alterations, it may move. The better choice is to split the table. So place your cursor in the row below where you want to split your table. Go to layout and go to split table. You can see now my cursor is between this top table and bottom table. Now if I just press my return key, it will send that section to the next page. Then I can place my cursor at the top here, press the return key, and I can actually move this table down. I'm just going to move this box down using my arrow key. Now you can see there's a couple of return keys at the top here. We can select that and delete them, moving this back up to the top of the page, unless you want it to line up with this bit here. You can just place your cursor at the top, press the return key, and simply line them up. But that's just a personal choice. The final thing is page numbers. Let's just pop down to the bottom and double click. We're now in the headers and footers. Go to page number, select page number. I'm going to put them to the center, and then click OK. 
double click in the center of the page and now we return back to the main page with our page numbers at the bottom. So finally, if you need to add or get rid of any of these rows, it's really simple to add a row, click anywhere in your document and you can go to table layout and you can either insert above or below and just click and you'll see that new row will appear. To go back, command or control Z. If you want to get rid of a row, select the row, right click, go down to delete cells, click OK and that row will be deleted. So to use this basically just print it off and use it as you normally would a checklist but if you want to make it digital you have to go and use the developer tab. I will link a video down below which will show you how to make this a digital form. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has please like and subscribe and have a great day.